Welcome back to the Dundee Show on the football. I think he said live. It's recorded, but on the football terrace. Hit the like buttons, subscribe, and of course, get your account set up now at Stocks FC. We've got a big announcement, a really big player that I want to speak to you about uh, coming on there today. Literally today, so you've got to get yourselves ready for that, people. Lots of transfer stories to delve into first, though, and I, I want to go uh, to Arsenal to begin with. The biggest news of the day, the Ornstein bomb. That Fulham reached an agreement with Arsenal for Emil Smith-Rowe. The deal will be worth up to $35 million, which will be a record recruit for Fulham, and it will match, if it reaches that level, the biggest Arsenal sale in their club's history as a 23-year-old is expected to do a medical and finalise his personal terms imminently. And I understand that this transfer deal will be met by some Arsenal fans with a heavy heart. This was a young man who, three to four years ago, seemingly had the world at his feet. That Arsenal, I mean, a lot of Arsenal fans actually rated him above Bakayo Saka. To go back to some of those... Arsenal podcasts and Arsenal streams we did when he was breaking through the the hype and, and rightfully so for his talent was absolutely massive. But through the emergence of others, injuries and whatnot, he hasn't quite achieved at Arsenal what he wanted to. But he becomes a very important asset for Arsenal to sell and then reinvest that money. And I think for me, that is the, the the parting gift that he is going to give Arsenal. Now, 35 million coming in that goes straight onto your books that then enables you to go out into the market. And I think what Arsenal are now going to do when you read the reports, unless they've been selling us, you know, doing a bit of a smoke screen, it looks like Mikel Moreno next on the list. Calafiuri's medical is being done. Arsenal, we're going to take this money from the Smith Road deal, bolster that midfield, improve that area, create more balance in their pursuit of their first Premier League title in 20 years. We also know they're very close to striking deals with Marseille for Eddie and Ketia and potentially Leicester City loaning with an obligation to buy Reese Nelson as well. And I think if they could get rid of those two, and you may not raise all the money year one because I think that um, Enketia could be a loan with obligation to buy. But you're then talking about another 50 to £70 million pound being raised in totality. That £100 million that's coming in, because it's the way it's a guarantee, that gives Arsenal a lot of scope to spend, spread that cost over a period of time. And you look at Marino potentially Nico Williams. There's obviously Jokoris that they're now linked to, £50 million bid reportedly on the card for him as well. So, look, Arsenal's transfer window feels like it's really kicking into gear now. First preseason game last night, and look, there wasn't too much to write home about. There wasn't too much to get excited about. But a very, very good start um, to preseason for them. And I think what they really need now, Arsenal, with some of these new players coming in, Sort of getting the competitive juices going internally, getting the fans a little bit more excited. And signing defenders is great, but we all get more excited about midfield players and attackers. And it feels like that is about to begin for Arsenal, where it has been reported the majority of the summer that we're going to have to start selling before they buy. But as ever, people, look, I want your thoughts, your feelings. Give us your comments below now, my people. Now, I mentioned Stocks FC earlier. You can get your account signed up here. This is actually my current portfolio. Don't worry about uh, the, the, the profit and the loss element. I'm not even worried about what goes on in green and red on the right-hand side. That will come in time. I am focused on this tab in the middle, which is rewards. And of course, I've only started building my um, my portfolio in the, in the off-season and pre-season. So there's been no re rewards to be earned. But that is what I'm focusing on. I'm buying people as cheaply as possible who I think are going to produce the most amount of rewards during games. And I'm really focusing on new IPOs that come out like Konate, Wharton, Branthwaite, etc. Or I have put quite a bit into Mateta. I think he can do well. But what's really important, we go to the IPO page on top. You can see it today. And this, this is a message to Chelsea fans and, of course, rivals too. Christopher Nkunku, huge IPO release today, 59 cents a share. I am investing in him. I'm actually going to put about £100 of 
stock into this player because I think I don't think he's going to have as bad an injury season as he did last year. I think that he's he's going to score, he's going to create. I think he's an excellent player. So this is a big IPO release. Get your account signed up for now. Scan the QR code or click on the link below. Start off in a small way, research it. I'll tell you one thing you've got to do on them. Let me go back onto their website, okay? You click on other at the top and click on their white paper. You can see what I'm talking about here. The reason I say that is their white paper really breaks down all the questions that you've got. How do you earn rewards? Uh, how am I protected? What can go wrong? Some of the frequently asked questions are in there as well. And I think it's really important to look at that. It really is. But then when you're done, check out the top performers. This gives you a way of, uh, uh, this, this will help you to understand who to buy. Chris Wood has been the most profitable player on this. It isn't just about buying stock in people that you like and you rate. It's what price are they available for? How often are they going to score and assist and, and, and win games, etc.? And what could they make you, how can they make a return on your investment? So go and check it out now, people. And as I say, Christopher Nkunku, as you can see here, is released today, 2 p.m. UK time. And actually, his share price initially was going to go out, as you can see. Sorry, I didn't mean to move that on my screen. At 98 cents a share. That has now dropped to 89 cents a share. So uh, go and check it out now, my people. Now, speaking of Chelsea, Atletico Madrid are extremely confident, according to reports, of signing Conor Gallagher from Chelsea this summer. The Englishman would be keen on the move, and he's had multiple conversations with close friends about moving to Spain. And look, it's a much better move for him than Tottenham. It's a much better move. This is a you know, Champions League team, a team that wins titles, a team that wins trophies. Imagine what he's going to learn under the tutelage of Diego Simeone. And I actually think he is a match made in heaven. I really, really do. And with Chelsea focusing on buying more midfielders, with Dewsbury Hall coming in, I just don't see where he plays. If Nkunku stays fit, where's he play? And when you look at the formation yesterday, the four, the, the three, four, three, if they stick with that, again, he's not in the front three. And in the, when it comes to that midfield sort of four, he can't go out wide. He hasn't got the legs for it. It's in the, the explosive speed that's needed. And he's not the kind of wide player that Modesca likes. And when it comes to the middle, you've got Lavia and Enzo and Caicedo, Dewsbury Hall. He just ain't getting game time. So I think that'd be an excellent move for him. And in other Chelsea news today, Chelsea agreed a deal to sign Felipe Jorgensen. That is according to Fabrizio Romano, who agrees the Blues have agreed terms with, Villa, with the Villarreal goalkeeper and hope to do the deal quickly. The deal is set to be around 21 million British pounds. And look, I, I won't be a hypocrite. I won't speak out both sides of my mouth. I think Chelsea have done some excellent business so far this summer. I really do. Tossing Dewsbury Hall, I think excellent. I, I like some of the other links that they're looking at. I think getting rid of the likes of Conor Gallagher is a good move for them. However, this one seems like a waste of money for me. £21 million for... I mean, some are, they're building it up like he's going to be the main goalkeeper. I don't know whether he is, but I, I don't think he's in the level. I don't think he's of the level. I think Chelsea should be putting their money elsewhere. But listen, Chelsea fans, give us your thoughts. Give us your feelings in the comments section below. Now, moving on to Liverpool, according to the Daily Mirror, Trent Alexander-Arnold wants to stay. Liverpool are yet to make any signings under Arnie's slot, but could be about to keep one of their key players. According to the Daily Mail, Trent Alexander-Arnold wants to stay at Anfield despite interest from Real Madrid. But what it doesn't speak about is whether there is going to be a new deal. And this is where Liverpool have to be smart. I get why you want to keep Trent. I think he's a phenomenal football player. One of the best right backs in the world. I get why Madrid want him. But you can't be letting him run this deal down. You've got to get some money for him. You've got to speak to him in the next five weeks before the window shuts and essentially say, are you going to sign a new deal? If he says, let's see how the season goes, boom, you sell. You get rid now. You move him on. Even if you're only picking up 50, 60 million, he's worth a lot more than that. It's better than nothing. You know, I'd, I'd rather lose a frutney bit than a fiver. And I think that it's really, really important that Liverpool get money for him. But he says he wants to stay. He may sign that new deal. And I think him signing a new deal would be such an important message to that dressing room 
as well that I'm backing Slot as the new manager. I am backing the club after Klopp. I want to stay here to win more trophies in my career. Remains to be seen what the Van Dykes and the Sellers do, but they are a lot older as well. But Liverpool fans, give us your thoughts, give us your feelings and your reaction to that. Finally, Spurs closing in on, is it Yang Min Hook? Is I think how it's pronounced. Tottenham have had a relatively quiet summer, but all could be uh, about to change. According to BBC Sports, Spurs are closing in on a move to sign the South uh, sorry, the South Korean star, Young Min Hook. I don't know much about him. What do you guys know about him? You need to kind of let me know in the comments section. Because, I, I, again, I'm not even making that as a dig. I've never heard of him. I've probably watched him play international football before, but wasn't particularly aware that I was watching him, if that made sense. As in, he I, I don't, I don't, didn't stand out to me. Predominant position on the, on the right. Can play on the left-hand side of the attack. There are rumours that Kulisewski could be on his way out of uh, 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 Spurs in, in the coming days and weeks and months. So I want to get your views and your opinions on that one too. As ever, I want to thank all of you for watching. Everyone who's hit the like button, your superstars. Go and check out Stocks FC. And I know some of you, Terry, why are you, why are you trying to sell us a product? I believe in it. I believe in it. I love it. And I think over the course of the season, we're going to have so much fun comparing who's, who's, who's stock is doing the best. And it's such, it just honestly stood out to me with the colloquial term of I've got stocks in that player. I think it's going to be amazing for us as a community. Again, if you can afford it, do it. If you can't, please don't put your money in. Don't spend rent money. Don't spend mortgage money. Disposable income only. Until next time, take care. Goodbye. God bless. And I'll see you all again soon. Peace.